Hi friends, welcome to the next installment of YouTube. We hope you're having a great day. Today, we're going to discuss the different types of insurance and the pros and cons of them. Just to be clear, I'm not trying to justify insurance or why you should get your pet insured. Just discussing the different sorts of policies and what they mean. countries in the world that offer insurance for pets but boy are there so many options present or what in my career it's not uncommon to hear owners saying that their pet is insured but when they actually make a claim they are caught short sometimes it's a level of cover and um, sometimes it's uh, having a wrong type of cover today I will try to explain the different types of pet insurance and the pros and cons of them so you can make an informed decision so there are a few different types of policies out there. The first one is a fully comprehensive lifetime cover. These policies are usually the most expensive, which means that the monthly fee or the premium as they're called that you pay is the highest. They cover pretty much all medical issues, including investigations, medicine, and surgery. Please read the small print or ask them what they do not cover. That's very important. They usually have other bits that are included like advertisements if the pet is lost. Some have a third party uh, liability cover, for example, if your dog damages your, say, your neighbor's fence. Uh, these policies are usually the most useful if you like a complete peace of mind that your dog is properly covered for life. Being lifetime policies, this also means that, for example, if you have a lifetime policy that covers up to £3,000 per condition per year and your dog contracts a skin condition at, say, three years old, you can make a claim of up to the limit of uh, which is uh, £3,000 for that condition in that policy year. And when you renew the policy, which is uh, important, you must renew the policy, uh, you will still be able to make the claim for the same condition again up to a new amount of say 3000 Hence the term per condition per year. It is important as some conditions like diabetes can be lifelong and it is important that your pet is still covered for that for the subsequent years. The second policy is a yearly cover policy. In comparison, the monthly premiums are usually less than a lifelong cover, but please do check. However, what this means is that if you have a claim for a certain condition like, say, diabetes, when you renew the policy when the policy year is up, that condition diabetes will be excluded, which means that you cannot claim for it ever again. It will be listed as what we call a pre-existing condition. Very, very important as many owners have been caught out that way. The third policy is an accidents only policy or accidental cover. Usually the premium is the lowest. Same again, please do check. It means that you're only cover for conditions that involves accidents like falling off a tree, getting knocked down by a car, um, injury caused by an accident like running through a barbed wire, etc. It does not cover for any non-accidental reasons like diabetes, for example. Next thing I'd like to talk about is the level of cover. What this means is how much should you insure a pet for in terms of medical bills. Usually for the accidents only policy, the sum is fixed anywhere between two to five thousand pounds. So this is more relevant for the first two type of policy. If your level of cover is up to two thousand pounds, what this means is that if the medical bills exceed two thousand pounds, for example, three thousand, you would have to pay the excess yourself, which in this case would be a thousand pounds. These are very tough questions and the answer really varies depending on which vets you go to, the level of care received and the treatment that is needed for that particular condition. To answer the latter question, how likely is my pet going to need treatment in the first place? That's also a difficult, question, uh, difficult answer. Common sense would say that if your dog is extremely active in a park, off lead and loves running, compared to a lap dog that's carried about all the time, it would be reasonable to say that the first dog uh, may be more likely to get injured as the exposure to unknown factors is higher. However, no one can say that a lab dog will not develop, uh, say, a medical issue like uh, diabetes anyway. So same for an indoor cat versus an outdoor cat. As to answering how much is my vet going to charge me, it will also really varies from place to place, what treatment is needed, so on and so forth. 
It is also depending on the breed. For some breeds of pets, as we know, they are more likely to develop medical issues. Please do chat with your vet if you like to discuss what level of cover they recommend, but ultimately it is up to you to choose a cover that you are comfortable with. I would also like to discuss the excess. So basically the excess is the amount that you have to pay whenever you make a claim. For example, if your excess is £75 and you're claiming say £100 as in that is a total bill, after the excess has been deducted, you will receive £25 from the insurance company. Excesses can range between £60 to £150, some more, some less, for some policies also depending on the situation. This can also affect your monthly premium. Uh, that is, if you choose a higher excess to pay, your premium may be less than if you choose, uh, if you choose a lower excess, so to speak. Um, so, I hope I have shed a little bit of light on pet insurance and you are now more informed to make the right decision when choosing a policy. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you have found the video helpful and please comment below if you have any further questions.